What's going on? My name is Psyche, and today I will be doing a full run in Dead Cells 2.1, featuring the new katana weapon added in in the 2.1 update. So here, usually I do all my runs in normal mode, that's why I don't have a custom run going and the reason why I don't have the katana right away. Not much really happens in the prisoner's quarters, since it's still the beginning, I'm still trying to find out the build that I'm going for. I do get hit a couple times, which is unfortunate, but... An elite failed experiment, I get hit by the laser strike. Unfortunate, and again with that, which I don't know how I didn't dodge. Kill the elite, get a bonus to 2 brutality amulet, which is very nice. Find a healing item, which heals me back up, and another scroll. Generally speaking, there are two scroll upgrades in the first level, so it's not recommended that you go to the second level unless you pick up both of them. An elite oven knife with the invincibility crystals, which I kill. This is the last of the two scrolls in the prisoner's quarters. I move on forwards to the toxic sewers because I think the Valmon whip actually does a good job at handling flying enemies. I decided to take Wings of the Crow because I thought it's actually not bad as a support skill. It has certainly gone better than what it was before. Here I just use the wings of the crow to just fly above these elites and they cannot do anything to me and I get in for an easy kill. And here is the start of the run. I find a bloodthirsty shield as well as the katana which I will use for the remainder of the run. What's interesting about the katana is that it has two different attacks. One is a normal combo attack and the other one is a thrust attack almost. Which you just don't see in, in any other weapon. So I hope they add more weapons like these into the game. Maybe you replace existing weapons with another moveset. Pick up more scrolls and more scroll fragments. The dash attack with the katana does a lot of damage, and because I have the initiative mutation, if I do the dash attack, it will do additional damage, which almost guarantees a one-shot on most smaller enemies. I use the wings of the crow again. Sometimes it's literally free kills. So why not? Find a challenge rune, but I'm close to having 60 kills, so I decide to kill some more enemies before I go through the challenge rune. In here, I buy the cluster grenade to replace Wings of the Crow, and here I will have a full brutality loadout. And even if you don't do the dash attack with the katana, the normal attack still does a lot of damage. I get 60 kills and I go through the challenge door, get another scroll. Unfortunately, this amulet does not have an extra jump, so I decided to just scrap it. I parry the saw blades with my shield. You can also roll through them, but having a shield just makes it more convenient for me. Same goes for the spike balls, it's possible to parry them or roll through them, which I find to be much faster. I tend to take it slow in challenge rifts to check my surroundings and know where the traps are at all times. Here I could have went through the top platform there but I decided to wait for another opportunity because I wanted to figure out the timings of the, the saw blades. So here I roll through the first spike ball and 
move on through to the next. Clear the challenge rift without taking damage and move on forwards to the corrupted prison. For mutations, I decide to take Predator because from personal experience, I find that the Predator mutation actually works really well with the katana. How it works is that once you kill an enemy, you will turn invisible for a short period of time. But what this allows you to do is to charge up that dash attack without fearing of getting hit. Now because I'm cursed, I decide to take it easy and just kill the enemies without any fancy movesets. And I almost got killed by the Toxic Miasma, but luckily I got the dash attack in time so it was not able to do its attack. Once again, I did the dash attack just in time, get some food to heal back up. And there's an elite slammer up there which I just didn't want to deal with along with the Toxic Miasma, so I decided to use the Homunculus Room to bring it down here. This is a strategy that's mostly used in 4 to 5 PC since most enemies will teleport to you, and using the Homunculus Rune is a great opportunity to isolate enemies. I see the Toxic Miasma turning into an Elite. When the enemy is stunned, that means the Malaise is about to turn them into an Elite variant. So even though they're about to turn, they are stunned while the transformation is going on, so it's possible to just go in and kill them. I take the infected food because I find that malaise isn't quite as consequential as the as how it was before. So even if I have a high amount of malaise, I don't find it to be a lot more different than having only like one bar of malaise. I move on forward to the ancient sewers, get my last mutation, which will be combo. Use the dash attack, and because I think combo synergizes really well with the katana since once I turn invisible, I will charge up another dash attack with another enemy, and this allows me to build up the damage created by the combo mutation. So here, a lot of stuff is going on. I decided to just jump platform to platform, try to find enemies to pick off from, parry the tentacle, and finally everything is cleared up. Here I'm just showing the footage of me getting all the scroll fragments as well as the upgrade scrolls. In here, unfortunately, my controller died on me. Normally I use a wireless PS4 controller, but after this I decided to go back to a wired PS3 controller setup. Luckily, the dark tracker did not do a lot of damage there and I just went back to pick up the food. I pick up the scroll while I'm fighting the elite, and I believe picking up scrolls will interrupt enemy attacks. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to be an exploit, but it's in the game, might as well use it. I find the flamethrower turret in one of the shops, which I believe is one of the best items in the entire game. Get some more scrolls along with fragments. I fight an elite disgusting worm, charge up the dash attack, and it's dead before it even attacks. Here the charge attack is just so good. The problem with it is that it has a long charge time and it may be and it leaves you vulnerable for attacks from the enemies. Luckily Predator is able to confuse a lot of the enemies since I'm invisible and they cannot detect my movement. With this little gap here, you can just use the homunculus rune to put your head through the poisonous liquid and get that treasure without even going down there. 
Normally you take a small bit of damage, but in this case I do not. Go on forwards to fight the Conjunctivious boss, and I knew this fight wasn't going to go well considering I have a melee setup and the boss is just going all over the place. I find that the dash attack doesn't actually do that much damage against Conjunctivious, so I decided to just stick with the normal attack. When the force shield comes out, just dodge away. And when I see the opportunity, I do go in for the dash attack, but it's mainly just there for the aesthetic purposes. It doesn't do that much damage, it looks like. Finally, I get it to the first tentacle phase. In this phase, I sometimes forget about the tentacles coming in. That's why this phase is where I usually take most of my damage in the fight. Luckily, I have a shield, so I'm able to parry the tentacles. And with the dash attack, I knew I could have just parried, but I'm not feeling very confident with that attack, so I just roll through the attack. Luckily, the flame turret is able to provide a lot of damage over time, and with the help of the cluster grenade, I get it into the second tentacle phase. I know it's possible to parry the tentacles coming up, but personally, I've never tried it, and I don't know how the timing for that looks like. After the tentacles are finished, I try to go in for drop down the turret and the cluster grenade for some easy damage. Just stand still while I have a shield so I can deflect the projectiles. As long as the Conjunctivious does not do her bullet held attack, I should be fine. The bullet held attack is where she goes up to the top and fires a barrage of projectiles at you, and it's essentially almost impossible to dodge them all unless you have a shield. Luckily, I finish the fight without the bullet held attack, I clean up the scroll fragments and get another stat on brutality. Move on forwards to the graveyard because I think it's the most balanced option out of Still Village Slumbering Sanctuary. Dash attack from the katana has to be one of the most satisfying things I've seen in this game, and with the predator mutation, it's you can do it very frequently, and it does a ton of damage. Here you can see I do the, the dash attack as the cannibal is coming in for his dash attack, so it looks like we dueled. Luckily, I came out on top. And here the flame turret just cleans up everything for me without me even doing anything, which is fantastic. The dash attack is almost able to kill everything in one hit, and it looks really, really fancy. Open the door, and I almost get hit by the automaton spawned by the malays, but luckily I was able to dodge through it in time. I thought I got hit for a second there because I knew I had to clean up this inquisitor that's always interrupting my plans, pick up the scrolls, and move on. I 
I think the cluster grenade is not as good as the powerful grenade or the fire grenade, but I think in specific circumstances it can be quite powerful, such as in Graveyard, since there are a lot of rats going around. The dash attack looked really fancy there with that quadruple kill, I believe. Find the curse chest, but unfortunately I don't find enough enemies to clear the curse on this level. So it looks like I'm gonna have to carry part of the curse to the next biome. Buy the food to heal all the way back up because I have the money, so might as well. I play it safe by dropping the cluster grenade, pick up the last scroll, and move on to the Forgotten Sepulchre. I immediately find the other curse chest here, and again play it safe, but because I was running low on light and I was going to take damage from the darkness, I decided to just take the curse chest here, because it spawns a light source. Again just being patient with the mummy, the flame turret takes care of the enemy for us, and here is a bit of a tricky situation where the elite aggroed on me and I was able to dodge a knife thrower just in time. A disgusting worm spawns from the malaise and I was able to clear the elite without getting hit. Throw down the flame turret to kill the remaining enemies. A failed experiment comes in which just kills himself so might as well take the free kill. Pick up the easier enemies, such as the crabs and the kamikaze bats, and I move on forward through this door, hoping for easier enemies. And I use the dash attack to kill three enemies at the same time and lift the curse. Unfortunately, I get hit by the knife thrower, so I took some chip damage. Thankfully, it's not a big deal, as I get my rally points back quite quickly. Hurry back to the light source and move on. I find a fire grenade to replace the cluster grenade with, since I think fire grenade is probably one of the better grenades in the game. And I was not able to parry in time with the failed experiment so I took some damage there. Again use the dash attack and if it's done correctly, the dash attack just looks really really cool along with the aesthetics of the weapon. And you can see how the build just comes all together along with the mutations. Initiative, since the first dash attack does a lot of damage and hopefully it kills the enemy in one hit. Predator to help me perform the dash attack without worrying about the enemies ever attacking me, since it turns me invisible after every kill. And lastly, combo to build up that damage as I move platform to platform, killing enemy to enemy. Pick up some food, which is nice. Get another scroll here. And the katana has certainly turned into one of my favorite weapons in the game. I definitely think it's an S tier item, just from my experiences and the amount of variety the weapon's able to provide. Unfortunately, I take some darkness damage when I was coming back from one of the secret locations. And I don't know why, but there are a lot of kamikaze bats here, and they were just confused because I was invisible, I believe, so they could not track me.
And here I decided to replace the fire grenade with the corrosive cloud because it provides bleeding and poisonous energy as well as electrocuting enemies around me whenever I use it. And here I thought I got the hit off the mummy but it turns out he was in the air so I was not able to kill it in time. I wait for it to teleport to me so I can kill it. And finally I find an upgraded katana, an 8th tier compared to the legendary 6th tier. So I replace this and sell the old one. And because I'm fighting the giant coming up, I'm taking open wounds, disengagement, and emergency triage since I plan on fighting Hand of the King right afterwards. Now the giant may not have been the best boss choice, maybe I should have gone to Timekeeper. The reason for this is that you will see in a second where the eyeballs come out, the katana actually moves the player forward a little bit so you actually fall off the fist, which can be a bit annoying. So here just trying my best to, to parry all the projectiles and the attacks, get in another round of damage, and I know it's possible to throw the flame turret on the fist in order to get more damage in, but for some reason I just didn't know how to do it. Luckily I get it down to half health, which now it's going to do double fist slam, which brings crystals down from the ceiling. I just try to do some chip damage every now and then, get the fist down, and attack it again. I tried to throw the flame turret on the fist but it didn't work out unfortunately so I was not able to get more damage in. Again with the crystals, I just try to attack when it's safe. And I try not to roll because I think rolling can cause you to roll into one of the crystals and it increases the likelihood of taking damage. And here I was really surprised because I was able to no hit the giant considering how long that fight went. Skip High Peak Castle and go straight to Hand of the King. Get two remaining scrolls and fight the second last boss in five boss cells. Now unfortunately I do take damage in this fight compared to the giant, which is unfortunate. Here I parry the triple attack. And I didn't want to do the dash attack because it left me vulnerable and unlike before, I don't have invisibility against bosses, that's just not how it works. And I didn't find that the dash attack did a lot of damage anyways. Triple attack again, this time I parry the last attack. The Hand of the King goes up to summon the enemies and I kill the Disgusting Worm right away since its bombs will get in the way once the Hand of the King comes back. I resume the fight, it does its big ground slam which I jump onto the ice platform. Just roll two times when the Hand of the King does the thrust attack. And once again, it will do its ground slam attack. Just go on the ice platforms when the timing is right. Carry the third attack from the triple slash. And I believe it's gonna do the giant ground slam attack one more time. And very luckily, the ice platform just respawn in time. Allow me to dodge the attack. And Hand of the King is dead. Since this is 5 BC, I move on forward to the Astrolab. I get my previous mutations back with Combo, Initiate, and Predator. Move on forward to the Astrolab. Now, I actually don't come to the Astrolab very often because I'm not a I'm not the best Dead Cells player out there. 
Actually, my win rate for death cells at 5 BC is only around 50%. But I don't struggle at all against these enemies because I'm able to unleash the dash attack on the katana without worrying about enemies ever attacking me back since I have the predator mutation. I find a weapon shop which I replaced the bloodthirsty shield with the frontline shield since it just had a better tier. I thought I could get a better katana here, but it turns out this is the katana I'll have to stick with for the rest of the game. And the librarians are the most annoying enemies in Astrolab, I believe, but luckily I was invisible so it was not able to unleash the beam attack on me. Find an elite failed experiment, which I kill really easily. Just one dash attack and some couple of slashes will do it. Yet another elite failed experiment, this time with the invincibility crystals. Luckily I was able to kill it in time. I thought the Librarian would have noticed me since I, there was a period where I was not invisible. But luckily it didn't, I killed the Elite Slammer and get the Allen Key, which is one of the two keys required to reach the final boss. Here I do the Cheese Attack on the Librarian where you keep running into a wall and it cannot unleash the Beam Attack on your location. Which I'm not sure counts as cheating, but whatever. I was really worried to not do the dash attack on these platforms because I didn't know if the pit they fell into were bottomless so I did not want to risk it. I take a hit on the laser, unfortunately. Here's some more enemies for me to kill. Again, I don't want to do the dash attack in case I fell off the platform. But from what I've seen, the katana actually prevents you from falling off platforms if you do the dash attack. Which is quite fortunate. And here I thought the bomber was going to fall off the map and die, but it came back unfortunately. Here we find the elite failed experiment carrying the elevator key. And finally we have both pieces to reach the collector. go to the final tower, find another librarian, and I get hit by it, but the thing to watch out for, especially in five boss cells, is that you should not panic whenever you get hit. And since the librarian does a lot of damage, you definitely don't want to get hit by those. So it's very important that you look out for the exclamation mark over the librarian's head before you roll, because an incorrectly timed roll can potentially lead to more unnecessary damage. Again, I tend to prioritize the Librarian because it posed more of a threat. I knock the Magistrate of Death into the electric line there, and it just dies on its own. Almost at the bottom of the tower, I saw a bomber spawn, and I thought it was going to come after me, but luckily it didn't. Unlock the first door with the Allen key, kill the bomber that spawned, and kill the librarian. And here I see a slammer on top of the platform there, and I just did not want to deal with it, so I send my homunculus rune up there to lure the slammer down, so I can fight it more easily. Almost got hit there by the axe as well as the slammer attack, but luckily I was able to dodge both of them and waiting for an appropriate timing, I hop up to the platform. I see the Librarian trying to unleash its attack again, just watch out for the exclamation mark, wait for it to do its thing, and after 3 beam attacks, the Librarian will become an easy target to kill. A 
again with the slammer, I didn't want to risk it since there were purple lasers up there, so I just lowered it down here to kill it. Open all the doors, and finally I see a brutality scroll up there, which I will definitely take, bringing my total amount of scrolls to 32, which is pretty average, I believe. I think around 30 is what a 5 boss cell run scroll count looks like, but I can't be too sure. Again with the dash attack, it just one shots everything, looks really really fancy. I'll go up the elevator using the elevator key, and there are two elite slammers up there. Fortunately, there's a cheese you can do where you just go down the elevator after aggroing one of them. It will drop down, kill it easily, and the other one will just die on it, so... I'm not sure if this counts as cheating, but it is in the game, so might as well take advantage of it. Go back and purchase the final food item to bring my health back to 100, and I go on to fight the collector. I rolled the katana affixes two times, which gave me self-synergy with inflammable oil as well as poisonous synergy. Reroll my mutations one last time to open wounds, disengagement, and emergency triage, and go on to fight the collector. Now the collector personally is a boss that I actually struggle with. To this day, I have yet to no-hit the collector because I find a lot of its attacks to be a bit unpredictable. But honestly, that's just me. I see the thrust attack coming on, so I just duck through the first and jump through the next one. I see the spin attack, so I decide to parry it. I think the spin attack, I have trouble parrying because I find the timing window on the spin to be a bit weird. Luckily, I get the collector down to one heal. He teleports to the room where I have to fight a bunch of monsters. Luckily, they don't pose too much of a threat. Collector comes down, go in some more hits. Teleports again and does its beam attack, which I'm able to parry easily. The collector heals one more time, does its overhead beam attack, which again, the timing is very important on that one. Just roll when the exclamation mark comes out. The collector heals one more time and teleports to another room. Now I tried to parry the spin attack, but I thought the timing was just a bit too weird for me. I Fortunately, I was able to parry at that time, which is very good. I take a hit here. Fortunately, emergency triage prevents all forms of damage when I'm healing. I don't know why I didn't jump there, because I thought I could have dodged it again with the beam attacks. Actually, all the attacks by the collector does a lot of damage, It's but it's mainly about finding the right timing. Here the collector drops the blue potion, which I, for some reason, I didn't drink it in time, so... Again, one last beam attack, and then I will get the collector with my own katana. Here, I struggle with parrying one more time, but luckily I was able to get the last hit in, and the run is over. So in the beginning of the update, I was really skeptical about whether or not the katana will be a good weapon, but after some testing, I thought the katana is actually one of the most interesting weapons in the entire game, because of how different its playstyle is compared to a lot of other brutality weapons. So there is the entire run. I had a lot of fun putting this together as this was one of my favorite runs. And in the future I will do more 5 boss cell runs with post-game commentary, so stay tuned. That's it for now, thanks for watching.